So today we're going to take a look at the Ember Inspector. The Ember Inspector is a browser add-on designed to help you understand and debug your Ember applications. You can install it on Chrome, Firefox and other browsers and also you can use it with mobile devices. I'm using Chrome so I'm just going to follow the Chrome instructions. Um, so to begin visit the extension page in the Chrome Web Store which is this. Um, click add to Chrome and once installed go to an Ember app, open DevTools and then click on the Ember tab on the far right. Okay, so let's add it to Chrome. Okay, so I'm going to go to an Ember app. Uh, Travis CI is a good one. Okay, so if I open DevTools, we should see that this is an Ember tab here. And if I go into the Ember tab, there's various things about the running app. To use the inspector with the file protocol, visit Chrome extensions in Chrome and check the allow access uh, to file URLs checkbox. So this would be if you're not running an Ember app from a server um, and you're serving it from a local file, uh, this will allow the Ember inspector to work. You can configure a Tomster icon to show up in uh, Chrome's URL bar whenever you're visiting a site that uses Ember. So we go to extensions and then click options. So options here, display the Tomster. Okay. So I guess if I refresh, we should see somewhere up here, the Tomster up here. And there you can see he's call it in. Um, so there's the instructions for Firefox, uh, which I'm going to skip. Uh, there's also a bookmarklet and you can also use the Ember CLI remote inspector if you want to inspect a running Ember app on a mobile device. Um, so there are our further instructions here and you can see that uh, there's an Ember app running on a mobile device and there's the inspector running in the background. So the object inspector. The inspector includes a panel that allows you to view and interact with your Ember objects. To open it, click on any Ember object. You can then view the object's properties. So um, I'll just make this a little bigger. So you can see here, uh, there are various things we can click on. There are controllers, uh, components, things like that. If I click on the application controller, you see it opens up uh, the object that we can view here. Um, so it's got some properties and it's got a bunch of mixins and uh, various sort of categories of properties here. The inspector displays the parent objects and mixins that are composed into the chosen object, including the inherited properties. So we see, if we expand this, all of the various uh, properties that make up uh, this application controller. Uh, each property value in this view is bound to your application, so if the value of a property updates in your app, it will be reflected in the inspector. Uh, so I guess that means this is live updating. Um, we'll look at some of these objects soon, so I, I guess we'll get the opportunity to see this update as we update the data. If a property name is preceded by a calculator icon, uh, like this guy, that means it's a computer property. If the value of the property hasn't yet been computed, you can click on it to calculate it. You can expose objects to the console by clicking on the $E button within the inspector. This will set a global $E variable to the chosen objects. So we can do that here. You can see the $Es beside all these controllers or models. So I'll do the model this time. Um, if I click es escape, I'll get up the console and you can see that it's actually sent it over. Um, it's now in a variable called $E and it is a model, so I can get its ID, for example. You can also expose properties to the console. When you hover over an object's property, a $E button will appear next to every property. Click on it to expose the property's value to the console. So if we were to look at, I guess, whatever this is, features, I click on the E, you can see it's sending whatever those properties are to the console. So you can also send objects from the console to the inspector uh, by using ember inspector.inspect. Um, so we can create an object and then inspect it. So let's 
So let's do that. Okay, so there is our object, and we can now call Ember Inspector dot Inspect Person, and you can see it sent that object over here. Um, and as before, we can click any of these to get at the values. You can edit string number and boolean properties in the inspector. Your changes will be reflected immediately in your app. Click on a properties value to start editing it. So in this case here, we can. Uh, we can edit these properties. Um, so our person has now been updated. In addition to inspecting the properties above, you can inspect properties that hold Ember objects or arrays. Click on the properties value to inspect it. So I guess this will allow us to actually navigate uh, hierarchies of objects in our Ember app. Um, so probably a good one to go to in this case is uh, the actual models. So if I go to one of these models, uh, let's see if we can find something to navigate to. So you can see these are all relationships that the model has. So we go to the repository and we're now actually in a repository and it's got some content and it's got a slug and actually we can probably uh, update that and you can see that the, the template updates uh, automatically. Um, I think we can go back as well, which is cool. Uh, you can see the path to the current object at the top of the inspector. You can go back to the previous object by clicking on the left facing arrow to the top left. Some properties are not only grouped by inheritance, but also by the fr framework level semantics. For example, if you inspect an Ember data model, you can see attributes, belongs to, has many, and flags groups. So we should be able to see this here. Uh, we're in a Ember data model right now. We have attributes, belongs to, has many, flags. Um, they're the, the various groups. Library authors can customize how any object will display in the inspector. By defining a debug info method, an object can tell the inspector how it should be rendered. For an example on how to customize an object's properties, see Ember Data's customization. So you can see here in uh, the model, uh, there is a debug info function which is setting up various groups that we saw uh, a minute ago. So the view tree. You can use the view tree to inspect your application's current state. It shows you the current rendered templates, models, controllers, components in a tree format. So you click on the view tree menu on the left to see them. Use the tips described in Object Inspector to inspect models and controllers. We saw that a minute ago. So. In a wrap here, you can see that there are uh, there's a hierarchy of views, the application view, then a component, and various sort of uh, nested components, and a header and a footer. To see how a template was rendered by Ember, click on the template in the view tree. If you're using Chrome or Firefox, you'll be sent to the elements panel with that DOM element selected. So let's try that. So if I click on the application template, um, I should be brought to the elements panel, but it doesn't seem to work. I'm getting this uh, error up here, this warning. Um, okay, seems like a bug in the inspector. Uh, what that should do is bring us to the elements and actually uh, select the, I guess it would be this, uh, the actual DOM element that is uh, that represents that template. Components and inline views. The view tree ignores components and inline views by default. To load these into the view tree, uh, check the components and all views checkboxes. So components and all views, and now we have the full hierarchy and you can see that there are things like here's a link to, for example. For every highlighted template, you can see the template name and its associated objects. Um, so you can see here as they're hovering, this area is selected. If you want to highlight a template or component directly when you're up, click on the ma magnifying glass in the inspector, then hover over the app. As your mouse passes over it, the related template or component will be highlighted. 
if you click on a highlighted template or component, the ember will select it. And then you can then click on the objects that back it to send them to the object inspector. So if I turn on the magnifying glass, you can see that I can hover over. Uh, here's a link to component. Here's another link to component. Um, what else do we have? If I scroll down, we have a build header and job tabs and things like that. If I click on it, you'll see it's actually sent that component to uh, the object inspector. So you can click the X button to deselect it. Um, the duration column displays the render time for a given template, including the template's children. By measuring the render time, the inspector adds a slight delay to the rendering process. Um, it's not an exact representation of inspected render time for a production app, um, so it's more. It, so it's the render duration is more useful just as a guide to compare times rather than an absolute measurement of performance. Um, so if I, uh, so we can see this here that the application in this case took was measured at 120 milliseconds. And you can see as we dive in, this uh, template took six milliseconds, this link to took seven milliseconds, so on. So inspecting routes. The routes tab displays a list of your application routes. So for the following code, uh, there's two routes, uh, a parent post route and a child new route. The inspector displays all of these routes. Um, as you can see, the inspector shows the routes you defined as well as the routes automatically generated by Ember. So in this case, the application route, um, uh, loading and error routes um, for both the application route and for the posts as well. The inspector highlights the currently active routes. The inspector highlights the currently active routes. You can see them, they're in bold here. However, if your app has grown too large for this uh, to be useful, you can use the current route only checkbox uh, to hide all routes except the currently active ones. So let's try that. Uh, so routes here, and you can see in this case, uh, Travis has quite a large number of routes. So if we want to see the routes that we're currently in, um, so application, main, repo, build, build, index. <coughs> So the data tab. You can inspect your models by clicking on the data tab. Uh, when you open it, you will see a list of model types defined in your app, along with the number of loaded records. The inspector displays the loaded records when you click on a model, model type. So in this case, uh, there are two posts, two comments, one author, and we're viewing uh, the two posts. Uh, if I switch to Travis, we can see what kind of models they have. Um, so there's commits, branches. Um, we can look at the data here. There are jobs, and queues, they've states, various things like that. Here's the Glimmer, here's a Glimmer repo that you see we uh, modified the slug a little while ago. Each row in the list corresponds to one record. The first four model attributes are shown in the list view. Clicking on the record will open the object inspector for that record and display all attributes. So let's try that for our repository. The data tab is kept in sync with the data loaded in your app. Any additions, deletions and or changes are reflected immediately. If you have unsaved records, they will be displayed in green by clicking on the new pill. Um, here, click on the modified pill to display unsaved record modifications. And you can also filter records by entering a query in the search box. So uh, in this case, we have one repo. Uh, none of them are new. None of them are clean. Uh, one's mod modified because we actually changed this from Glimmer to we added 222. So I guess if I remove that, it should, yeah, it live updates and you can see if we go to clean or all, uh, our model is there and it's no longer blue. Okay, so you can also query in the search box. Okay, so I search for Glimmer. Um, I guess if I go here, if I go to branch and search for master. Okay, so there's our 
uh, models that can happen to contain the word master. You can use your own data persistence library with the inspector. Um, build a data adapter and you can inspect your models using the data tab. Use Ember Data's data adapter as an example. So if you're in the business of writing your own adapters, you can plug it into the inspector. Um, and you can use the example here for Ember Data. As part of making your app upgrades as smooth as possible, the inspector gathers your deprecations, groups them and displays them in a way that helps you fix them. To view the list of deprecations in an app, click on the deprecations menu uh, tab. You can see the total number of deprecations next to the deprecations menu. You can also see the number of occurrences for each deprecation. Um, so in this case, there are five cases of this deprecation and one of this. So let's see how Travis is doing in terms of deprecations. Um, I guess we may have to reload the app, so let's try that. All right, it looks like Travis have no deprecations, which is cool. I wonder what version they're using. 2.7, nice. If you're using Ember CLI and have source maps enabled, you can see a list of sources for each deprecation. If you're using Chrome or Firefox, clicking on the source opens the sources panel and takes you to the code that caused the deprecation message to be displayed. Um, so I can't demonstrate this because uh, Travis are right up to date, but um, I guess you click on it and you, I break the code, cool. You can send the deprecations message stack trace to the console by clicking on trace in the console right here. Click on the transition plan link for information on how to remove the deprecation warning and you'll be taken to a helpful guide on the Ember website. Um, you can filter the deprecations by typing a query in the search box. You can also clear the current deprecations by clicking the clear icon at the top. Okay, library info. To see a list of libraries used in your application, click on the info menu. This view displays the libraries used along with their version. So for Travis, here's the info tab, and you can see uh, both for Amber and Amber Data, they're on 2.7, which is currently the latest versions. If you'd like to add your own application or library to the list, you can register it using amber.libraries.register and give it a name and a version. Um, I wonder if we can try that in the console. So my amazing lib is 1.0.2. Uh, go back. We may have to, oh, there it is. Okay, cool. If you're using the Ember CLI app version add-on, your application's name and version will be added to the list automatically. Um, like that, cool. Debugging promises. The inspector provides a way to look at all promises created in your app. Click on the promises, mem uh, click on the promises menu to start inspecting them. Um, you can see a hierarchical list of promises with labels describing each promise, its state, its settled value, and the time that it took to settle. Uh, they also have different colors based on their state, uh, fulfilled, pending, or rejected. And you can filter them uh, using these pills. You can also search for promises by putting a query into the search box. And you can also clear the currently logged promises by clicking on this icon. So um, let's see what we will see here. So here's an Ajax request that is fulfilled. Um, we should be able to see its fulfillment value here. Here's the actual object that resolves. So none seem to be rejected or pending. They're all fulfilled. Uh, if the fulfillment value of a promise is an Ember object or an array, you can click on it to open it in the object inspector. Um, so you, you saw that we did that before. You can click on the uh, the value that was the fulfilled value here. If the rejection value is an error object, you can send a stack trace to the console by clicking on stack trace. You can also click on the dollar $E button and send the value console which is this guy here 
The inspector provides a way to view uh, promises stack trace. This is disabled by default for performance reasons, but you can enable it by checking the trace promises checkbox. Um, and you need to re reload to trace existing promises. So we can do that here and reload. And you can see now we have trace information. To trace a promise, click on the trace button next to the label, which will send the promise stack trace to the console. So if we were to say this uh, application start handler and trace it, and we switch to the console, you can see that we have the full trace here with uh, links to when and where it was invoked. Promises generated by Ember are all labeled by default. You can also label your own RSV promises to find them in the inspector's promises tab. Okay, inspecting objects via the container. Every Ember application has a container that maintains object instances for you. You can inspect these instances using the container tab. It's useful for objects that don't fall under the dedicated uh, menu, such as services. Um, click on the container tab and you'll see a list of instances that the container is holding. Click on a type to drill in and see a list of all instances of that type maintained by the container. So we can use this to find out, for example, like it does Travis uh, use services, for example. And they do, which is great. So some of them are kind of built in. This is the Ember data store. Uh, but you can see that they also use uh, different things here. They have a session storage service, um, a features, which is possibly feature flags, something like that. Um, flashes is probably for notifications to the screen, update times, permissions, rendering performance. You can use the inspector to measure your app's render times. Click on the render performance tab to start inspecting render times. Using the inspector adds a delay to your rendering, so the durations you see are not an accurate representation of the speed of your production app. Use these times to compare durations and debug rendering bottlenecks, but not as a way to accurately measure rendering times. Um, so render performance. So you can see there's a number of views here. Uh, the one that's taking the most time is this first one, which takes 267 milliseconds. It's got an outlet, it's got a top level, it's got a pop up click handler uh, component. Someone, you know, view, it's got a layout and uh, we can drill in here and you can see that the it's it's uh, this 216 milliseconds represents the total time it took to render all of the children. So as we drill in, you can see that this link to, in this case, took 29 milliseconds. Um, this loading, loading indicator component took just over a millisecond. Click on the clear icon to remove existing render logs. To measure components and templates that are rendered on initial application boot, click on the reload button at the top. This button ensures that the inspector starts measuring render times when your app boots. Like that. To filter the logs, type a query in the search box. So if we put in curly braces, you should see that uh, it highlights all the components for us. 